Hello everyone, it's Eric from Yankee Traders. You may have been watching the financial markets lately and seen that they have been quite chaotic and you may want to protect yourself for the worst case scenario in the future. And if you've thought of that, then you may have thought about buying some gold. Gold is a great investment to protect against future uncertainty. When I first heard about this as an investment, I was a little confused about how to go about it because there are just so many things you can do. I personally recommend getting physical gold before you get anything else, and I'd like to tell you about the best ways to go about doing that. Now, there are other products and things can be confusing, but I'm not gonna get into any of that today. Today, what I'm gonna cover is the best ways to buy physical gold and how I like to go about doing that. But before we get to that, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, click the notification bell, and please leave a comment down below, because if you are watching this, then I wanna hear from you, the viewer. In this video, I will cover what physical gold you can buy, what you should pay for physical gold, which physical gold products you should buy, what size coins and or bars you should get, where to buy physical gold, and where you can keep your gold. What physical gold can you buy? Now, if you want to buy gold, there are so many things that you can buy, and there's a lot to choose from, and a lot of it has to do with preference. Many governments from around the world mint gold and have previously minted gold coins because that used to be passed around in circulation as currency. But now they sell it differently. They do it because they want to generate revenue. The most popular coins you can get are the U.S. Gold Eagle, which is 22 karat gold, the U.S. Gold Buffalo, which is 99.99% pure gold, the Canadian Maple Leaf, which in 1979 became the first ever 99.99% gold bullion coin, the Gold Britannia, which is also 4 nines fine gold, for those unfamiliar with the term, if something is 99.9% .9 gold, we call it 3 nines fine gold. If something is 99.99% .99 fine gold, we call it 4 nines fine gold, and so on. The Australian Kangaroo, which is 4 nines fine gold. The Austrian Philharmonic, which is also 4 nines. The South African Gold Krugerrand, which is 22 karat gold. The Mexican Libertad, which is also three nines. The Chinese Gold Panda, which is three nines and also of a different weight scale. One other option that I didn't show here is that you can buy gold rounds and gold bars made by private mints. This can also be a good option because the premium on that tends to be lower. What you should pay for physical gold. You should get as close to spot price as possible. Spot price is the thing that you see on the screen, on the ticker. If you pay close to spot price, you're getting a good deal. The spot price is the price that's traded on the commodities exchange. That's only the paper price. The physical price of gold, that has a premium attached to it. You wanna pay as low of a premium as possible because then you're getting the best deal and then you can use that what you save on the premium to buy more gold. But there is always a premium attached because you need someone to make that and they need to get paid because they also need to eat. Which physical gold products should you buy? One good example of a low premium is this half ounce round from Scotiabank at JM Bullion, which has only a $20 premium associated with it, which is $40 per ounce. And at $1,900 an ounce, that's only a 2.1% premium. And that's excellent, even in historical terms, the last few years for the low price you pay for premium. If you live in the United States, then there are advantages to getting certain types of coins. If you get a U.S. Gold Eagle, which is the most popular coin in the U.S. and the second most popular gold coin worldwide, or the Gold Buffalo, then in a number of states you do not have to pay sales tax. And if you buy or sell under a certain amount, then it does not have to be reported to the authorities. Furthermore, if you keep them in a retirement account, then you would be subject to the normal capital gains rate for taxes as opposed to the higher capital gains rate of a collectible. If you do not live in the United States, then I would advocate buying what is cheapest. The most popular gold coin worldwide is the Gold Krugerrand from South Africa. 
the premium on this is lower than the US coins. From my personal experience, I have found that the Australian gold kangaroo coins typically have the lowest premiums of any government minted coin. But if you are outside the United States, then you should buy whatever is most popular and best priced in your area. It may be the gold Britannia, it may be the Australian kangaroo, or it may be the gold Krugerrand. I can't say for sure, but if you are living in India or Russia, I imagine that the South African gold Krugerrand is cheaper to buy than the US gold eagle. I personally do not recommend getting numismatic coins or collectible coins if you want to buy gold. There are some people who do this. There is a collectible value to it. But if you're trying to protect your purchasing power, that's not the thing that you want to do. I'll give you a good example. You see this Mickey Mantle card that I saw on eBay? That card costs $3,000. But if you wanted to make an investment in cellulose or paper, you wouldn't buy that card. You would just buy the paper that that card is printed on and that paper would be cheaper and then you can make more cards. Collecting numismatic coins is similar to that. You're buying something that's collectible, you are not buying extra metal in the process. I personally recommend buying the metal and I can't advise you on buying a numismatic collectible coin. What coins and bars should you get? The most standard size for a gold coin or bar is one ounce. That is one troy ounce of gold, and that is 31.1035 grams of gold. I recommend buying one ounce coins and bars because that is the most common size, which means that it is likely to carry one of the lowest premiums. This is important because if you ever have to sell, then you will most likely get the market price, and if you got any more than that, you would still get less than what you paid in premiums. I would generally advise against buying one tenth ounce gold coins. Those premiums are the highest because of the labor to make each coin. It's roughly the same as on a one ounce gold coin, which means your premium is going to be a much higher percentage of what you pay. I would generally advise against buying one fourth ounce or one half ounce coins and bars because they typically have high premiums as well. However, sometimes you might find some good deals on this. A few months back, I found that the 1 4th ounce Australian gold kangaroos were selling for cheaper than the 1 half ounce gold kangaroos. Overall though, it's better to save up, if you can, to buy a 1 ounce gold coin. My first ounce of gold is something that I had saved several months to get. It was on sale at JM Bullion and advertised as gold at spot price. It sold out within 2 hours of posting it in their weekly sales and deals. If you can't save up enough money to buy a one ounce piece of gold, or if you believe that the price will climb too quickly, or if you find a really good deal, then buy a fractional piece, which is at least one fourth of an ounce of gold. Where to buy physical gold? The best place to buy physical gold is at the local coin shop. They will usually have the best premiums, which are frequently cheaper than buying it online. You should call them first to see what they have or if they have what you're trying to find. A lot of times they might not have the exact thing for which you are searching, but something similar. For example, you may want a one tenth ounce gold eagle, but you might get a gold Old maple leaf instead. And in case you are interested, my favorite coin shop is the Happy Coin. The owner, Chris, is very knowledgeable and helpful. I do not recommend going to buy gold at a pawn shop. They typically do not specialize in collecting coins and bullion and therefore the selection is more likely to be limited and the price is likely higher as well. You can also buy gold online and they will likely have a better selection. My three favorite sites are JM Bullion, SD Boolean, and US Gold Bureau. Personally, I like the website of JM Boolean the best, but sometimes they don't pack their coins well and they can fall out of the sleeve. They have good prices and they also have products that other dealers don't carry. The best overall to get from is SD Boolean. They consistently have the best prices and they also have a good YouTube channel that gives weekly market updates. US Gold Bureau is also a great place to buy metals. For some products, they consistently have the best prices and their customer service is outstanding. And they really do go the extra mile to try to make sure that you are happy. How to store your gold. 
This part is very easy in some ways. Gold is very expensive and stores a lot of value in a small volume of material. It is also chemically resistant but very soft. You don't have to worry that your gold will tarnish or corrode, but if you don't want your gold to get scratched, then I would suggest using plastic capsules like I use. You can keep it pretty much anywhere, but you want it to be a secret. You don't want to tell people where it is, but you also don't want to keep it in an obvious hiding place. If it's just one ounce of gold, then you could tape it underneath the sink or a table or drawer or wherever, or pretty much anywhere. It's small and easy to hide. If you have several ounces, then you can have several hiding places, but you don't want to risk someone else finding them, and you don't want to forget where it is. Having too many places can make it easy to forget. You can also bury it like a pirate. If you do this, you want to make sure that you don't alert anyone to what you're doing, which can be very difficult for a number of reasons. Whether or not it's during the day or at night, you run the risk of people seeing you do it if it's during the day, and at night, if someone sees you digging, it will look suspicious. If you end up with too much gold to safely store at home, then you can keep some of it in a safe deposit box at the bank. But be careful not to put everything there, because if you do, legally the bank controls that, not you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me via comment. And remember, learn new things, remember the old, buy silver, buy gold. I hope this was informative. If you want to know why you should own gold, then try this video. And if you want to know more reasons why 2021 is a great time to buy gold, then try this video. Thank you very much for watching.